1971, Plymouth only made 17 440 six-pack CUDA convertibles. And this is the only one of its kind, and today we'll show you why. Chrysler Corporation redesigned the Barracuda model for 1970. Uh, it used to be an A-body platform uh, before 1970, but then they combined some of the elements of the A-body with the B-body to create what's called an E-body platform, which is a, still a, a compact size car, but now there was enough room under the hood to fit any of Chrysler's engines uh, in the car. So you could get these with everything from a 225 slant six all the way up to the monstrous 426 Hemi. Uh, this particular car is interesting because it's got a 440 under the hood with the six pack uh, three carburetor uh, fuel system on it. And they made seven Hemi Cuda convertibles for 1971. They made 17 440 six pack Cuda convertibles for 71. The 440 was almost the same performance as the Hemi, but about half the price and that's why you can see the numbers are about double of what the Hemi cars were. There are cool little styling elements all over this car. The blacked out tail panel, the exhaust tips coming through the lower valance, the optional luggage rack, of course the tawny gold color. Uh, this car is only one of two made that have the billboard stripes and the shaker hood scoop. This one, of course, has the 440 billboards. Uh, the other CUDA elements going around the front of the car. You got your fender gills here, uh, the shaker scoop. This one is black, uh, coming through that gold hood up in front. The characteristic 1971 grill. It's kind of a signature piece for these cars. They redesigned the grill to have the six openings designed to resemble the teeth of a Cuda fish. This one's got driving lights, uh, the hood pins, uh, and of course it's a convertible. So I mean it's like everything you could throw at this from a styling standpoint, they did. Other cool things about this particular car is that the convertible top and rear glass are original. The car's been restored but that's the original convertible top. And it's kind of funny when you think, you know, you're gonna restore a convertible, most of the time you think, well, the convertible top is shot, we have to replace that. Now on this car, that stuff is exactly how it was when it rolled off the showroom floor. And everybody knows that the Chrysler colors were pretty wild back in the early 70s. In fact, you could get this car new in any of about 20 different colors, but this is the only 446 pack Cuda convertible ever built wearing code Y9, which is called Tawny Gold. And it's definitely a unique color. In the sunlight, it goes from kind of a brown to a moss green. Uh, this car has been restored, but we've been told that every panel on it is still original. It was never rusty. It was just taken apart, um, you know, dings and dents pounded out of it, and it was refinished and repainted. And this car has been certified by Galen Gauvier, who runs a service called uh, Galen's Tag Service, where he verifies that this thing has the correct equipment that it came with from the factory, including the factory numbers matching 446 pack engine, Torque Flight 727 automatic trans, and the uh, Dana rear axle. This is all the stuff that came with the car from the factory, and it's all still here. And this car also has a long list of options, making it uh, to be the highest optioned 446 pack Cuda convertible uh, known to exist. Always got to be super careful when pulling these hood pins because we don't want to scratch anything. There we go. By 1971, uh, the compression ratios started to drop on most muscle cars. The uh, insurance companies were putting pressure on them to make them a little less powerful. And you can imagine people didn't buy these things to not drive them. You know, so they were driven hard, a lot of people crashed, insurance rates went through the roof. The other thing is that emission standards were coming and these cars had to burn cleaner and cleaner. And when you had a big gigantic engine with multiple carburation, you know, the environmentalists were kind of opposed to these things. For 71, the 446 pack still made 385 horsepower and 490 foot-pounds of torque. 
underneath the big shaker scoop is uh, the three two barrel six pack carburetor system. But when you just drove around town, you would only utilize the center two barrel carburetor and not get into the extra two two barrels on the outside. So you could kind of, you know, leisurely drive this car and actually get some pretty decent fuel economy out of it. But when you put your foot to the floor and the linkage opened all six barrels at once, you better be holding on. Just an awesome, awesome car. Tons of torque, uh, free revving cylinder heads. This thing just liked to scream. And I always thought that this, uh, this scoop just adds so much personality, not only from the front of the car when you're looking at it, but when you drive the car and you watch that sucker torque as you drive, it's cool. When you look at the cars in the Brothers collection, they have a lot of significant cars that are you know, the only one of their kind, and some are more prominent than others. And this particular car is possibly one of the most significant muscle cars in the world, you know, because it's the only 71 Cuda convertible in this color with these options, with the hood and the billboards being a convertible. I mean, this particular car is really something special. And because some of these cars are that significant and, you know, irreplaceable, we don't always get a chance to drive them, but at least we had some fun with this car. Whether tawny gold is your color or not, you have to admit this super highly optioned, extremely rare Cuda is a very cool car. We've got more pictures of it on our website at musclecartheweek.com and you can check the Facebook page, uh, all kinds of goings on there. You can post comments and tell your friends. And uh, the YouTube channel is a place where you can subscribe and always get the latest video from Muscle Car of the Week.